Hello, everybody. Welcome into Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Welcome in. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Today, we are going to cover all of the major stories from over the weekend, including the NBA draft, which is taking place on Wednesday. We are going to talk about what that might entail as far as the number one overall pick, the choices there for the Atlanta Hawks, whether or not they might trade out of it, and who might trade into that number one overall pick. Then we'll talk a little bit about the Cavs hiring Kenny Atkinson from the Warriors. He finally takes a job after being rumored to take one for quite some time. Uh, He finally is taking a job in Cleveland. We'll talk about the implications of that, what it means for their future, and everything surrounding it in Cleveland. Then we're going to move to some hockey talk, talk about Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals that is going to happen tonight between the Oilers and the Panthers. The Oilers are one game away from, from starting a reverse sweep, just the fifth ever in NHL history, the second ever in the Stanley Cup Finals, first since 1942, and the first cup for a Canadian team if they're able to take it home since 1993. So we'll talk about all the implications everything, all the storylines heading into Game 7 tonight. And then we'll move into some baseball as Edwin Diaz, the all-star closer for the Mets, is suspended for 10 games after getting caught with sticky stuff heading into his appearance last night. He was ejected and then suspended 10 games. He is appealing. We'll talk about everything and how that might affect the Mets with the trade deadline coming up right around the corner. And then we'll end our show on some Men's College World Series, a do-or-die game three tonight between Texas A&M and Tennessee, who is going to take home their first ever men's college world series championship we'll talk about all of that and more coming up uh, at the end of the show but before we get into the nba remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are all you need to do is go to gsmc podcast and shop up on the green for you and everybody else around the world see if you do have a burning question about sports anything at all that you would like to ask Go ahead and throw that in the comments, throw in the chat, I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Appreciate all of you guys for sticking around, talking some speed, beautiful Monday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to start off talking a little bit about NBA draft. And the real question, this is a very interesting NBA draft. There isn't a clear guy, there isn't a guy that people are saying is come in and take over a franchise, but not to say that this is an awful draft, right? You know, there has there isn't that a one level star that we expect in a lot of it. This is still a solid draft class. You know, you have some players that can be very, very productive here in the NBA. It's not going to be a superstar powered draft, but it is an interesting question at the top. The Atlanta Hawks have the first overall pick after winning the lottery in a surprise. They were fighting for that play in spot in the East and they end up getting the first overall pick instead, it's going to be a really interesting conversation whether or not they use that first overall pick. Are they going to sell? Are they going to try and build around that first pick? Are they going to keep Trey Young and DeJounte Murray and, you know, try and build around them? There's a lot of questions to be answered here in this draft, especially especially since it is one where it isn't a clear number one pick. We haven't had something like that in the draft for quite some time. Uh... But let's talk a little bit about it, right? The Hawks have that number one overall pick. First question is, are going to draft there? The Hawks are in an interesting situation where they have guys like Trey Young and DeJounte. They've got a a good amount of value if they were to trade them. And the Hawks are stuck in between trying to compete and deciding whether to blow it up, right? You have the core that, in theory, should be able to compete in a weaker Eastern Conference, but we're seeing the results, whether that be because of health, whether that be because uh, the team isn't meshing together or, you know, not having quality man down low. There's there's a lot of, there's the, the Hawks, for whatever reason, aren't and haven't been able to get that kind of a uh, cohesive unit that, you know, led them to an NBA uh, Eastern Conference Finals just a couple of years ago. You know, this is a team that not too long ago was was competing for a chance to go to the NBA Finals, and now they are number one overall pick in the draft, even though it was a weird lottery draw for them to get that number one overall pick. Another option is they traded. There were reports that the Spurs were looking to trade up to that number one overall pick, and that would be a fun conversation to have, right? Victor Wembanyama being paired up with the number one overall pick, most likely one of his, uh, one someone from France, uh, either Alex Saar or uh, Zachary Richard. 
right? You know, these two French seven footers that, you know, can continue, uh, to make that Spurs team, the, the two giants, you know, it's a very similar thing to what they did. Obviously not the exact same, but kind of similar to the way that they built with Tim Duncan, uh, and all of those Spurs teams of the past. Uh, so <clears throat> who knows? Maybe they're able to pull that off. If I'm the Hawks, I'm being a big man here, because if I'm here trying to diagnose the Hawks issue and, there's a lot of issues with the Hawks, right? The Hawks aren't one piece away from competing, but in a weak Eastern Conference, if they're able to get a good piece, if they're able to get, for instance, a big man, like I said, that's something that they've really been missing. Clint Capella has fallen off a cliff since he was able to be that that factor down low that he was a couple of seasons ago, back when they made the run to the Eastern Conference Finals, dispatching the Knicks in Madison Square Garden, that famous Trey Young wave. He was awesome in that playoff series. Uh, but this, this Hawks team needs that presence down low. Trey Young's able to find him, and Clint Capella hasn't been very good at finishing. There's some guys from France. If if the Hawks are on to this pick and draft a guy like Alex Saar, there at number at number one overall you know Alex Saar is is one of those guys he's seven foot four right and he has a little he has that spacing ability he can also you know as a seven foot four guy be able to play center uh you know he's got those long arms play good defense on on the other side of things the other Frenchman and that's really what this seems like it's a it seems what, what it seems like it's a it's a combination of right. You have uh, Richard, who's also you know not not a small guy himself. There's lots of seven footers at the top of this draft that I expect to go. Uh, I think the Hawks will end up making this pick, and I think Alex Sar is the guy. That's the way that the betting lines are going right now. Uh, the seven foot four Frenchman uh, is going to add a huge huge. Uh, compliment to Trey Young. We know what Trey Young is, right? He's a great offensive weapon. He's got great court vision. He's able to set up his guys. If Alex Sar is able to put everything we've seen from him, you know, all the tape that he's got, if he's able to put that on display, right? He's he's going to get he's he he's going to make that team very good, right? You know, Alex Sar does have a little bit of inconsistent shooting from 3, but uh if he's able to Keep a shot, and that's that's one of the things. There's big, there's there's ups and downs with all these players, uh, and I think he, he's able to develop in the NBA the way that they want. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun little combination with him and Trey Young. People are talking all the time about Trey Young going to the Spurs, right, and teaming him up with Wemby, which that's a fun little picture, right? But you know, you get him his own kind of tall. You, you get his own kind of. Uh, big man with the Hawks, he can, he can make this team, a, a, a team that can compete with the Celtics, right? A team that, again, this is a weak Eastern conference, right? We saw how weak it was last year. And I don't expect every single team in the East to make a big jump this year, right? That Western conference is tough to get through, but this Eastern conference is ripe for one of those teams down low, a Hawks, a heat, you know, maybe the Pacers who were a six seed make that step. You know, there's, there's a there's there's a lot of there's there's a lot of options here for teams in the East to take that next step up. Uh, Notorious TBG asks original thoughts on Josh Giddy Alex Caruso trade. I cannot believe that that was a trade that the Bulls made. Alex Caruso, one of the best uh, defensive role players in the game, right? His ability to come in and affect the defense goes to the Thunder for essentially nothing, right? Josh Giddy is a guy that maybe has potential, but his shot is horrendous. He was a liability in the playoffs. He was benched, and I'm not going to say he's the whole reason why the Thunder couldn't get past the Mavericks, but they were attacking him defensively. They were leaving him open uh, offensively. They they were, he, they, you couldn't leave him out on the floor. So, I don't understand the trade. Maybe they're trying to tank. Maybe. And Chicago needs to reset. They need to reset hard. But not getting a single pick for Alex Caruso is shocking. I don't think they, they, they'll they get much uh, as far as draft value for Zach Levine, for DeMar DeRozan, for uh, Lonzo Ball if he's healthy enough to be traded. You know, these guys, just their contracts are too high. They're on expiring contracts, stuff like that. And 
Alex Caruso was the guy that you were going to get the most value for, and you just get Josh Giddy. And I quite honestly have no idea what was going through the heads of the Bulls front office there. But, uh, you know, it's great for the Thunder. This Thunder team, who were, who was a one seed in the playoffs last year, right? They go through and they add uh, Alex Caruso. Defense, as good as they were, you saw they were kind of struggling against Luka and the Mavericks, especially down the stretch. As good of a job as Lou Dort did, did on Luka, as, as good of a job as Lou Dort did on Luka in that series, we saw him figure it out down the stretch. And having more versatile wing, def- wing defenders to be able able to go after the rest of that Mavericks team, you know, they were kind of double covering Luka and that they left PJ Washington wide open in the corner a whole bunch of times and that ended up costing them at the end of that game five, I believe it was, uh, you know, when he got fouled on that three and made those, made those, uh, those foul shots to put them ahead for good. This is huge for the Thunder, and they still have many draft picks and assets to go and make a move to go at another star. You know, this is this is a young Thunder team that's adding, and I think they fleeced the Bulls. So, hope that answered your question. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's very exciting. Uh, overall, right now, I think going back to the number one overall pick in the NBA draft, uh, the... The Hawks, I think, are probably going to take Alex Sar here. Again, that's how the the betting the the betting lines have changed to. Uh, it was it was Richar, uh, but I'm taking Alex Sar here if I'm then trying to pair a quality big man who can finish down low with uh, Trey Young before really giving up on that core that they've built because they still have him locked up for a little bit. But anyway. In our next segment, we are going to move on to the Cavaliers. They hired Kenny Atkinson, uh, a the the assistant from the Warriors who'd been part of the uh, who'd been part of the the Warriors coaching staff for quite a long time. The Cavs get their guy, quality head coach. We'll talk about that, everything it means for the future in Cleveland, and much more coming up next here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. <laughs> 